Salvador Allende was a man of contrasts, a privileged son of the Chilean upper middle class who chose to dedicate his life to the plight of the poor and marginalized. Born into a family steeped in progressive ideals, Allende's early life seemed destined for anything but the path he would eventually take. His upbringing provided him with a front row seat to the political debates that shaped Chile, and his exposure to the harsh realities of inequality only deepened his resolve. By the time he reached adulthood, Allende's commitment to social justice was more than just a personal belief. It had become his life's mission. But what drives a man to challenge the very foundations of the society that raised him? What motivates someone to risk everything, his career, his freedom, and ultimately, his life, for the sake of a vision that many deemed impossible? As Allende ascended the ranks of Chilean politics, these questions would become central to understanding not just the man, but the movement he represented. In the years to come, Allende's ideals would lead him to the highest office in the land. Yet as he stood on the precipice of power, a storm was brewing, one that would test his convictions and challenge the very future of Chile. How did Salvador Allende, the doctor-turned-politician, become the symbol of hope for some and the target of fear for others? The answer lies in the tumultuous journey that was just beginning. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Compelling History. Today we'll continue our series of biographical videos with one of Chile's most influential politicians, Salvador Allende. But before we begin, we'd really appreciate if you could give this video a like. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. Speaking of more videos, make sure you check out some of our previous series covering topics like historical monuments or inflection points throughout history. Now, let's get into the video. Salvador Allende's journey into the annals of history began long before he became the world's first democratically elected Marxist president. Born on June 26, 1908, in Santiago, Chile, Allende grew up in an environment steeped in political discourse. His family, part of the Chilean upper middle class, had a deep-rooted tradition of involvement in progressive and liberal causes. His grandfather, Ramon Allende Padin, known as El Rojo, the Red, was a prominent physician and social reformist who founded one of the first secular schools in Chile. This legacy deeply influenced young Salvador, instilling in him a commitment to social justice and political reform that would shape his entire life. Despite his privileged upbringing, Allende was acutely aware of the stark social inequalities that plagued Chile. When he was just a year old, his family moved to Tacna, a city under Chilean administration at the time, where they lived until 1916. These formative years exposed Allende to the harsh realities of poverty and social disparity, sharpening his sensitivity to the plight of the less fortunate. By the time he returned to Santiago to attend the National Institute, Allende's intellectual curiosity and political awareness were well developed. His education at the Liceo de Valdivia and the Eduardo de la Barra School further fueled his interest in societal issues. As a teenager, Allende was profoundly influenced by Juan de Marchi, an Italian-born anarchist and shoemaker, who introduced him to radical ideas that would later become central to his political ideology. In 1926, at the age of 18, Allende entered the University of Chile in Santiago to study medicine. During his medical studies, Allende was deeply impacted by Professor Max Westenhofer, a German pathologist who emphasized the social determinants of health. Westenhofer's teachings resonated with Allende, who saw firsthand how economic and social conditions directly affected the health of the poor. This understanding reinforced his belief in the need for comprehensive social reform, particularly in addressing the root causes of poverty and inequality. Allende's political activism intensified during his university years. Elected president of the Student Center in 1927, and later vice president of the Federation of Students of the University of Chile, he quickly became a vocal advocate for social justice and workers' rights. His leadership within the student movement marked the beginning of his public life and laid the groundwork for his future political career. In 1933, at the age of 25, Allende co-founded the Socialist Party of Chile in Valparaíso, alongside figures such as Marmaduke Grove. The party emerged from the frustrations of a generation marginalized by the traditional political system. It sought to represent the working class and aimed to transform Chilean society through radical social and economic reforms. As a young socialist in a conservative society, Allende faced significant opposition and even persecution. Socialism and communism were often equated with subversion and treason in Chile at the time. During this period, Allende endured numerous hardships. The government's crackdown on leftist activities led to the imprisonment and exile of many of his colleagues. 
He himself was under constant surveillance, and his political activities often put him at odds with the authorities. Despite these challenges, Allende remained steadfast in his beliefs. These experiences only strengthened his resolve to fight for a more equitable society, even at great personal risk. As he transitioned from medicine to full-time politics, Allende's early experiences were crucial in shaping the leader he would become. His medical background provided a unique perspective on Chile's social issues, and his commitment to socialism was rooted in a deep empathy for the marginalized. These early years were not merely a prelude to his presidency. They were integral to understanding his motivations and the challenges he faced throughout his life. Salvador Allende's early life is a testament to the power of conviction and the courage it takes to challenge the status quo. His journey from a privileged upbringing to becoming a champion for the oppressed was marked by both triumphs and tribulations. It was this journey that shaped the man who would one day attempt to reshape the destiny of an entire nation. Salvador Allende's political beliefs and ideologies were deeply rooted in Marxism, which he adapted to the Chilean context throughout his early political career. As a founding member of the Socialist Party of Chile in 1933, Allende envisioned a society that prioritized the needs of the working class and marginalized communities. His commitment to these ideals was unwavering, and he sought to implement them through legislative efforts and grassroots political work. Allende's political career began with his election to the Chamber of Deputies in 1937, representing Valparaíso. His background as a medical doctor fueled his commitment to public health, leading to significant reforms, including legislation that expanded access to health care for Chile's poorer populations. As Minister of Health under President Pedro Aguirre Cerda in 1939, Allende spearheaded the creation of a national health service. His ambitious reforms aimed to reduce mortality rates, combat endemic diseases, and provide universal access to medical care. However, these efforts faced criticism from opponents who argued that such widespread changes were too ambitious for Chile's economy. This tension between Allende's idealism and the practicalities of governance foreshadowed the challenges he would face later in his career. Agrarian reform also played a central role in Allende's political ideology. He believed that land redistribution was crucial to addressing inequality and empowering the rural poor. As a senator, a position he held from 1945 until his election as president in 1970, Allende consistently pushed for land reform legislation. His efforts, though met with resistance from the landed elite, resulted in the passage of several key laws that redistributed land to peasant communities. However, these initiatives were often constrained by the political realities of the time and opposition from conservative factions within the government. One of Allende's significant early political missteps occurred during his 1952 presidential campaign, when he formed an alliance with the Popular Socialist Party. This decision alienated key segments of the left and contributed to his defeat. His open alignment with Marxist principles further polarized the electorate and led to internal divisions within the Socialist Party. Despite this setback, Allende remained a formidable force in Chilean politics. He learned from his mistakes, refining his approach to building a broad-based political coalition in subsequent elections. By the time Allende ran for the presidency for the fourth time in 1970, representing the Popular Unity Coalition, he had refined his political strategy. The Popular Unity Coalition was an alliance of Chile's leftist parties, including the Communist and Socialist parties, and its platform promised sweeping reforms aimed at benefiting the lower class. Allende's platform, which included ending inflation, reducing the cost of medicine, and adjusting public housing rent, resonated with many Chileans who had grown disillusioned with the status quo. Despite facing opposition from powerful domestic and international forces, including significant intervention by the CIA, which sought to prevent his election, Allende's political career culminated in a narrow victory. His election, however, marked the beginning of a tumultuous presidency, as he pursued a socialist agenda in the face of growing economic challenges and political opposition. Throughout his early political career, Allende demonstrated an unwavering commitment to his socialist ideals, even as he faced significant obstacles. His legislative achievements in healthcare and agrarian reform laid the groundwork for the more radical changes he would later pursue as president. However, these early years also highlighted the complexities of implementing socialist policies within a capitalist framework, foreshadowing the intense struggles that would define his presidency.
Salvador Allende's presidency, a turning point in Chile's history, was marked by his bold vision for a socialist state and the intense controversies that arose both domestically and internationally. His rise to power in 1970 came during a period of significant economic instability in Chile, where inflation was rampant and the gap between the rich and poor was stark. Allende, a Marxist and the candidate of the Popular Unity Coalition, promised sweeping reforms to address these disparities. His campaign focused on nationalizing key industries, redistributing wealth, and improving social services, policies that resonated with many Chileans who were disillusioned with the existing economic conditions. Upon taking office, Allende immediately began implementing his ambitious agenda. One of his first major acts was the nationalization of Chile's copper industry, which he believed was essential for reclaiming the nation's most valuable resource from foreign control. This policy was popular among his supporters as it symbolized Chile taking control of its economic destiny. However, it also attracted the ire of multinational corporations and the United States government, which had significant investments in the industry. Allende's other policies included agrarian reform, aimed at redistributing land from large estates to the rural poor, and the expansion of social programs in education, health, and housing. These initiatives were intended to reduce inequality and improve the quality of life for the working class. However, they also contributed to economic difficulties, including a growing fiscal deficit and accelerating inflation. His decision to freeze prices while raising wages led to shortages in black markets, exacerbating the economic crisis. By 1972, inflation had skyrocketed to 150%, plunging the economy into further turmoil. In October 1972, the first major strike broke out, led by truckers and later joined by small businessmen, professional unions, and student groups. This 24-day strike crippled the economy and forced Allende to bring the army, led by General Carlos Prats, into the government as interior minister. Allende's government commandeered trucks to keep the nation moving, but the action was later declared unlawful by the Chilean appeals court. This period also saw rising tensions between the poor, largely indigenous supporters of Allende's reforms and the white elite, further deepening the political divide. Internationally, Allende's presidency was highly controversial. The United States under President Richard Nixon viewed his Marxist government as a potential beachhead for Soviet influence in Latin America during the Cold War. The Nixon administration, through the CIA, actively sought to destabilize Allende's government, employing economic pressure, such as influencing international lenders to cut off credit to Chile and providing covert support to opposition groups within the country. Despite efforts to maintain normal relations, Chile was forced to diversify its diplomatic and trade relations, establishing ties with countries across Africa, Asia, and Eastern Europe, and joining the non-aligned movement. Allende's economic policies and international alliances, particularly his close relationship with Cuba, heightened fears in Washington and led to increased efforts by the U.S. to undermine his presidency. The CIA had been involved in anti-Allende activities even before his election, and after he took office, these efforts intensified, culminating in economic sanctions and support for opposition forces in Chile. Domestically, opposition to Allende's policies intensified. The middle and upper classes, as well as sectors of the military, grew increasingly hostile, viewing his reforms as a threat to their interests and the traditional social order. The economy continued to deteriorate, with hyperinflation, strikes, and political violence becoming more prevalent. Allende's inability to secure a stable political base or effective control over the military created a volatile environment. The Christian Democratic Party, which had initially supported a socialist platform, drifted away from these positions, forming a coalition with the National Party against Allende. The tipping point came on September 11, 1973, when a military coup led by General Augusto Pinochet violently overthrew Allende's government. The coup was supported by the CYA, which had been involved in undermining Allende's presidency from the beginning. As the military attacked the presidential palace, Allende chose to remain inside, making a final radio broadcast to the nation in which he reaffirmed his commitment to his ideals. He died in the palace, reportedly by suicide, a tragic end to his presidency. Salvador Allende's time in office is remembered as a complex chapter in Chilean history. While his vision for a more equitable society inspired many, his presidency was marred by economic mismanagement, political polarization, and external interference. The coup that ended his rule not only led to his death, but also ushered in a brutal dictatorship that would govern Chile for the next 17 years. Allende's legacy remains contested. 
symbolizing both the hope for social justice and the dangers of ideological extremes. Thank you so much for watching our video on Salvador Allende. We hope you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more videos in our series of biographies. If you are, make sure to drop us a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next video covering one of the most influential soul artists of all time, Sam Cooke. Comment below what other topics you'd like to see explored in future episodes or series. This channel is not possible without your support making it happen.